England won Serbia nil. Let's talk about this game, ladies and gentlemen. What did we learn from this game today, ladies and gentlemen? Let me know in the comment section what you thought you learned. Because one thing I learned is all this talk about Bakayo Saka should be on the bench. Bakayo Saka shouldn't be starting over Cole Palmer. Bakayo Saka shouldn't be shoehorned into the side because Foden's better than him, because Cole Palmer's better than him, because Anthony Gordon is a better left winger than everybody else, because Bakayo Saka can play left back. I'm hearing all these things. I'm hearing, oh, Bakayo Saka limps a lot. Oh, Bakayo Saka, he, he's, he's, he's injured. Oh, you know what? A half-fit Bakayo Saka is still running the show for England. Still running the show. Him and Jude Bellingham ran the show today for England. Literally, we're 12 minutes into the game. He gets an assist for a Jude Bellingham header. To, and, that's the, and that's the goal that keeps England 1-0 uh, ahead and wins him the goddamn game. The guy, you guys keep talking about Cole Palmer should be starting over him. Cole Palmer's third in the pecking order. Jared Bowen came off the bench before Cole Palmer came off the bench. He didn't even play today. He didn't even play today. But let's get into this game. This game was very interesting because I wanted to see how England would set up. England set up in a situation where they had, if I could show you guys the team, I'm going to bring it up for you guys right now. England set up in a way where they had a back four. That we, we predicted this this was, this was going to be the back four, by the way, because of how the England numbers and everything was set up. But it was pretty predictable how they were going to set up. But when we seen the, when I seen the lineup, I wasn't really surprised. I knew that he was going to go with I knew that he was going to go with Trent in 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 the team. I knew that he was going to go with Guehi because he gave Guehi the number six. Trippier left back. You got Trent Alexander Arnold, Rice, Bellingham, Foden, Saka, and Kane. Now the thing about this is, two people in this front four did not really work. Foden and Kane. Kane's actual best contribution of the game was defensive. And Foden, I don't really know what he brought to the game. He was quite poor, misplacing passes consistently, had a couple goal-scoring opportunities, once once from a pass from Jude Bellingham where he didn't control the pass, another situation where Bakao Saka squared it to him, he wasn't in the right position, and any time he had the ball, it seemed like he was misplacing it consistently. You also had Trent Alexander-Arnold playing in the midfield. He just didn't seem comfortable in the midfield. He consistently gave away the ball in bad areas, consistently made mistakes, and he just seemed like it was not... Uh, him playing in the midfield was not the best decision against bigger countries. You're gonna, you're gonna, he's gonna get caught out because he was very uncomfortable in that position. But the back line was relatively comfortable. Pierre and Trippier didn't really have much help on that left hand side as Foden was drifting so deep, uh, so much closer to the middle that Kieran Trippier was out by himself, literally on this whole side by himself. Bakayo Saka though was outstanding, guys. Bakayo Saka today was one of the best players on the pitch. And you guys talk about, oh, Palmer this, Foden this, all these other players. You know something? Palmer's a good player. Foden's a good player. But Bukayo Saka in any system, any manager, any game, he just takes he just takes players and he just rips them apart. No double team today. He had the left back injured and off the pitch in under 20, uh, what was it? In under 20, uh, 40, under 45 minutes, he was out, out of the game. Because he just couldn't keep up with Bakayo Saka, he actually ended up having to leave the game due to injury. This is this is this is what Bakayo Saka has done to the player. He literally left him not feeling himself, and I don't blame the guy. The guy's thirty-one; he can't be keeping up with Bakayo Saka right now. And then you also have a situation where Jude Bellingham, Jude Bellingham today, guys. Oh my goodness, this guy, one of the Ballon d'Or number one candidates, had an amazing game. Not only did he get the goal on his only shot of the game, but he was one of the main men driving the team forward, pushing everything that they did in the final third that, that was good somehow came through him. And it almost seemed like because Kane wasn't as impactful, Bellingham was always coming, to, uh, was always that guy in, in the attack today that was doing everything. Almost like with Bellingham there, Kane no longer has to do any of that uh, dropping deep and, and picking up the ball from deep and getting involved. Today, he only had two touches in the first half. Harry Kane was quite poor. So, yeah, we spoke about that already. And overall, Declan Rice, great performance. But I think there's going to need to be some some tweaking because I don't know if Trent as Trent in the midfield is going to work consistently. You're going to have to look into this a little bit further. What are they, what are they going to do? How are they going to do this? Because if I'm not mistaken, who's England's next opponent 
in the in the tournament. If it, if I'm not mistaken, is Denmark. Denmark's a decent team. They won today. Eriksen scored a goal. If you're gonna beat Denmark, you're gonna need to you're gonna need to show a little bit more uh, offensive nouns because England can score goals and they can score goals in bunches. But against Iceland, you didn't win. This game, you you scored one goal. It's you haven't really like. It's been a very high-scoring tournament so far, and England didn't show their full capabilities in the offensive end of the pitch. Defensively, they were quite solid. They didn't really give Serbia too many opportunities to get at them. And when they did, it was from their own mistakes where they passed the ball to the to the opposite defender. So in my opinion, England have a lot to work, uh, a little bit of work to do, figuring out what their best 11 is. I still think they could still work on some things. I don't know if Trent in midfield is the solution for the remainder of the tournament as yes, it did bring a little bit of balance and it allows you to do his thing, but you're heavily depending on the right-hand side. The left-hand side is almost non-existent and you need to find some solutions for that. Maybe that means either dropping Trent and putting in a Conor Gallagher or a Kobe Mainu, but even then, I don't know it, who who would be the number one in that situation. I think you have to probably look at Connor Gallagher for a Trent replacement. And then Foden, you need to look at if Foden can't produce against Denmark, he himself might lose his place in the team. And another person who potentially could lose their place, either Kyle Walker or Kieran Trippier, because I think what Trent offers them um, passing rise is is useful on the on the pitch. So maybe you can try to see how you can shoehorn Trent into the team. And not necessarily play him as a midfielder, but hey, the the manager's the manager thinks Trent can do it in midfield. So let's see what he does. The next game is against Denmark. What would you guys change for England, and what did you guys learn from this game? But yeah, that's what I picked up. And overall, it was it was quite boring of a game, but England did their job. Bakasaka stepped up, and one thing we learned today: Bakasaka is the best attacker for England, at least in that game. And Jude Bellingham's definitely the best midfielder for England. No debate. Yeah, that's it for now. Hopefully you guys enjoy this video. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Uh, Eid Mubarak to everybody. Happy Father's Day to everybody. And yeah, man, we'll catch you guys on the next video. Hopefully I'll do a live very soon. Uh, and I'll be back at it Monday. Catch you guys soon. Love for the love, people. You already know what it is. And yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to go absolutely nowhere, guys. And also, check out the title sponsor on today's video, which is none other than SofaScore.